Hi guys, I'm Danny. It has been a while since I've been on an SCSS page. Um, I've been working behind the scenes for the past year, uh, but Julianne asked me to pop on here and kind of talk about um, what telehealth has looked like in the past uh, week or so. Um, I'm currently an SLP in South Bend, Indiana. I am working at an autism therapy center, so my entire caseload consists of kids with a diagnosis of autism. I have kids ranging from ages two and a half, three, to about nine or 10. I'm really bad remembering the ages. Um, however, I have quite a few younger kids. So decreased attention, increased energy, and then the kiddos on my caseload have a variety of different skills. I have a couple AAC kids. I do have a couple of feeding kids. And then, um, you know, uh, quite a few nonverbal kiddos. Um, a lot of kids on my caseload, we are doing unstructured therapy in the clinic. So transferring that over to telehealth has been quite interesting. Um, I am a very hands-on therapist. Um, you know, I'm, I'm the type of therapist that if need be, will run around the room to do stop and go and, you know, bouncing kids on our lap. You know, I know that's a lot of us, especially when we're working with our younger kiddos. Um, so yeah, Julianne just asked me to pop on here and kind of talk about what that's looked like and what I've kind of been learning and applying in the past five days <laughs> that I've been doing telehealth. So please know that by no means am I an expert, am I even that knowledgeable in telehealth. Um, I'm just really in the same boat that all, a lot of us are in where we had this situation that nobody could really plan for. And um, all that we're trying to do is be there for our kiddos and best provide services to our kiddos regardless of the situation and right now that means telehealth so i had no experience uh, prior to this through telehealth none whatsoever it was not even really a consideration of mine um, although i did like the idea of wearing sweats to work every day even though i wear scrubs i feel like that's kind of essentially the same thing but anyways uh, that's beside the point um so <sighs> I mean, it has been kind of a sink or swim type thing. You know, we kind of all got thrown into the deep end and all that we're trying to do is, is provide services for our kids. You know, we don't want a huge lapse in services. Um, I will say speechtherapypd.com put out some really great content. They had a fabulous webinar two Mondays ago. Um, and I will go back to kind of a little bit of what was talked about in that panel that I've carried over into my sessions. Um, that being said, I wrote down just a few things that I've really been trying to remember and focus on during my speech sessions via telehealth. Um, the first and main one is find your child's passion, um, especially the when we're doing unstructured tasks. So the first few sessions with some of my kiddos, it has we've watched Peppa Pig. I've shared my screen and we are watching Peppa Pig on YouTube and we are signing more and or we're working on, you know, calling kiddo's name, is kiddo responding, um, a lot of things like that. Um, I don't love, well, I don't love Peppa Pig, but you know, I tried to avoid using YouTube if I can during sessions. However, especially in this situation, it is brand new for them. They've gotten thrown into, you know, a new schedule. We've gotten thrown into a new schedule. And then now mom is present. So I work in an outpatient clinic the kiddos are at the clinic all day from 8 to 4 30 8 to 5 and then i'm going and grabbing them from their room bringing them to the speech room and then taking them back i have very little parent involvement in my sessions um so they're not used to seeing me with mom or dad around so this is a whole lot of new for our kids too if we're stressed and feeling anxious about the newness like you know our kiddos are probably feeling that too so that being said, if kiddo wants to watch YouTube and that's what's going to elicit communication from them that day, I'm going to use it because I'm, I just want to be able to deliver the best therapy that I can with the model that we're using, which is, you know, telehealth. And so is it, is it ideal? No. Would I rather we're interacting and doing joint attention tasks and doing up, 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 down and all these vocal routines? Of course. But 
you know, we have to do our best given the current situation. And right now it's been really important for me to find out what is the kiddo going to best engage with. Um, one kid stared at the window the entire time, jumping up and down. And so we did a little bit of, you know, environmental sabotage and I had mom stop the jumping and we waited for a, for kiddo to look at us. And when kiddo looked at us, we went, oh, you want to jump? And then we let go and yay, you're jumping. And so stuff like that, you know, I mean, that's what we just have to do right now. Um, going off of that, this was mentioned in the speech therapy PD.com panel that was run by Michelle Dawson. And the name of the presenter is escaping me. And I, I deeply apologize for it. I'm terrible with names as it is, but she said something super profound that I've just really tried to remember. And that's that the parent is, is an extension of you and you really uh, applying a coach, a parent coaching, type model has been super helpful for me. Um, so I've modeled for the parent what I want them to do, especially with my younger kids that have decreased attention, high activity levels, um, regardless of their language skills, you know, I've really been doing the parent coaching. And I gotta tell you guys, it has been so fun to watch these parents step into this role and step in and do some really cool things with their kids. Um, and it's so fun. So for example, I could keep going on, but I'll give you a quick uh, success story, if you will. I have a kiddo, um, nonverbal, uh, really decreased attention, younger kid. And uh, so therapy is very unstructured. And <laughs> They typically, when we're one-on-one, -on -one, the kiddo will pace back and forth in the room and will clap, and, uh, but really decreased engagement with me. So we're really working on those joint attention skills, right? And um, I was anxious last week heading into this session. I mean, I was nervous. I wasn't sure what to expect because I'm still trying to figure out how one-on-one -on -one therapy is going to be in person. You know, this kiddo just got on my caseload. So... I explained the goals to the parents and kind of what I would do if we were one on one. And then uh, I was like, well, that took about five minutes and we have 25 minutes of therapy left. So <laughs> it was a little um, like unnerving. And so then I remembered, you know, they said, okay, the parent is an extension of you. So what would you do, Danny? Okay, well, I would probably engage in some parallel play. So then I asked this. <laughs> This big burly dad, I said, hey, I'm going to need you to follow your child around the living room and do exactly as your child's doing. And the dad goes, okay. And this dad got up and was running around the room and clapping just like his child was and squatting up and down. And then we had this wonderful moment where kiddo stopped and looked up at dad and realized dad's playing with me. And it was this beautiful moment and mom and dad and I are going, yeah, we're cheering and we were so excited to see something so cool and like, it was awesome. And so I've really tried the parent coaching as much as I can um, and showing them what I can via, you know, I've used my dog as an example. <laughs> like there, you know, you just have to get creative and just work with what you got and you have to be flexible. Um, that's, you know, huge, but also enjoy the parent involvement. So like this morning I have a kiddo that very clearly has some motor planning deficits and this kid said mommy for the first time. Guess who's sitting next to kiddo? Mom. So he has said mommy for the first time and to see mom, like I get excited in therapy sessions, right? I would have gone, wow, that was awesome. But to hear mom go, oh my gosh, he just said mommy, like, you guys, that's so cool. Like, what an opportunity we have here. Um, so enjoying that parent involvement. I'm one that gets anxious when parents are involved. It's not my favorite. I'd prefer to just be hands-on, just let me do it. I'll do the therapy. Um, but to have the parents involved can be, it's been such an unexpected blessing. Now, 
It's not always sunshiny and the parents aren't always cooperative. However, reminding, it's been helpful to remind myself as well that these are probably the parents that wouldn't be cooperative if we were doing one-on-one -on -one therapy either. I don't think the medium has necessarily changed the way that this parent would interact, if that makes sense. Um, Another thing that's been really huge is I've tried to keep the structure of our sessions as similar to what they would be if we were in person one-on-one. -on -one. So if I drill, drill, play break with a kiddo, that's what we're looking at, um, you know, d during our telehealth sessions. And I explain that to parents. This is what our therapy session would look like if we were one-on-one. -on -one. If it's unstructured and I'm having parent run around with me on their phone following the kiddo around the room, as we are narrating their play and utilizing auditory bombardment and all of that stuff, if that's what I'm doing, I'm going to explain that to the parents before. Hey, this is what we would be doing one-on-one -on -one if it was just me and your child. So I try to keep the session structure as close to what it would be in person as possible. That's been helpful. I think that's helped the kiddos as well. Um, educate, educate, educate. I think we have a really cool opportunity to work closely with parents that we might not otherwise. Um, I know that's not the case for everyone, but that's the case for me. And that's something that I found super helpful and I'm really trying to capitalize on. I have an opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with these parents that I would not otherwise see very often. And using that to help encourage these generalization or the generalization of the, the things that we're working on in speech. I think we have a really neat opportunity here. Um, the two last things are a little um, less therapy based and more personal. Um, in, don't stop being your enthusiastic self. Um, I need to buy all of my neighbors like a gift or something to apologize for how loud I can be in therapy. Um, if a child does something awesome, I want that child to know that I saw it and I am pumped. So I'm cheering, I'm clapping, you know, don't stop, don't take a back seat just because you're using the parent coaching model. This is still your patient. These are still goals that you are working on together that you have worked hard with your client on. So don't stop being enthusiastic. Don't stop being the therapist that you were for this child one-on-one -on -one in person. Don't stop being that therapist just because there's a, a computer in between you two. Um, and I think that the parents really appreciate that. Um, I don't know that parents often, if they're not sitting in sessions, I don't think that they understand all of what goes into speech or OT or PT. You know, they're not there in the sessions, so they don't really understand some of what we do. And so, you know, I've kind of seen it as an opportunity to show these parents how much their child is just loved and how much they're celebrated. You know, if like I will flip over backwards if a kid does something really well because I want that child to know Miss Danny is so proud of you and stop or don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop being your enthusiastic self. Don't stop celebrating those baby steps. Um, you know, a kiddo said mommy this morning. He's still highly unintelligible, but he said mommy this morning. And that's something to be celebrated. And especially in a time like this, I think it's really important. And I think it's helpful for parent morale. Right after that kiddo said mommy, mom asks me, this is a mom that has pretty much, she took a back seat in most of our sessions, which is fine. And um, this kiddo attends pretty well. Um, but then she goes, what can I be doing? Excellent, this is beautiful. Um, you know, we're working as a team and it's so cool, you guys. Um, and then the last thing, and this was reiterated quite a few times on the speechtherapypd.com webinar um, a couple weeks ago. We know our stuff. <laughs> That's been something that I feel like I have just meditated on, um, even though let's be honest, I haven't made time to meditate, but it's, we know our stuff. We know these kids, you know, even if they are new to us, we still, we've seen them in the evaluation. Um, we've seen them around the clinic. We've seen them around the school, whatever it is. We know our stuff. We know our kids. We know how to speak to our kids and how to make progress with our kids. That doesn't change because the delivery method changes. Um, in fact, if anything, that further reinforces the fact that we know our stuff, that we're able to continue to do therapy with our patients 
regardless of the delivery method. And it might, it's not going to be perfect and it's not going to be pretty. And it is going to be stressful as we adjust to this delivery model. But the, the, how much we know doesn't change. In fact, it's just going to expand our knowledge and teach us more about what therapy, I'm going to be changing some things that I do with these kids one-on-one -on -one in therapy because of what I've learned from watching them in the home. Um, so really shifting the mindset has been helpful for me um, outside of you know the actual therapy, going into it with an enthusiastic mindset and knowing that what I learned from my teletherapy session with this kiddo today is going to it's just going to benefit me. Even if it's knowing, oh, there's a really, I see a communication breakdown here in the clinic with me, but at home there's this communication breakdown. That's all information that we can use to better serve our patients when we do transition back into the clinic and we are back into our normal routine. Um, a couple I have rambled on long enough. I asked Julianne to give me a time limit and she said there was none, so that's her doing. <laughs> Um, a couple of resources that have been awesome. The ultimate SLP.com or it's just ultimate SLP.com um, has a two week trial. They have some really great interactive games. Um, speech therapy PD.com has been awesome. I believe boom cards is something. Um, everyday speech.com I think is having a sale. Um, none of these are sponsored. These are just all things that I've heard through the grapevine. Um, you know, I've been using Kaufman cards on YouTube. Um, so one of the clinicians that I work with, um, or he's on the, he's an SLP at some of the clinics in the company that I work for, and um, he has uploaded uh, some Kaufman card um, modeling. So that's been super helpful because I do not have a set of Kaufman cards. Um, you know, I mean, it's just now is a time for us to really collaborate as professionals and now is a time for us to really help each other out. I know that on teacher pay teacher, uh, teachers pay teachers, there are quite a few resources that are now made free. Um, you know, the independent clinician, I think, is also having some really good stuff. I mean, just keep getting out there. Um, if you have other things that can be useful to other clinicians, please comment. Um, you know, send this to whoever. I don't know that it'll be much help. Um, Julianne, I tried. But um, if you have people that have questions about telehealth, shoot us a message. Um, SCSS is, you know, I've been working closely with them and some of their clinicians as we all try to figure this out. You know, we're all on the same team right now. We're all just trying to do our best for our patients. Um, and that's, you know, we all just want to help each other right now. And, um, yeah, so if you've stayed around this long, thank you. I apologize for making you wait or making you stick around for so long. Um, if you have success stories, anything like that, let us know. I think right now is a time for us to really just spread some positivity and, you know, in such an uncertain time, especially, you know, in our field. This is new for a lot of us. So, um, Sharing success stories is super important. Asking each other questions, really collaborating with each other. You know, we're, we're open for it. Um, so yeah, <laughs> thank you guys so much. Um, to our patients, that, to SCSS patients that have stuck with us during this transition time, um, you know, I know that I will speak for the company and say that we appreciate you and your patients as we try to figure out how best to serve you guys. And, um, that is my appointment appointment reminder, so it's probably a good idea for me to sign off. Um, parents at SCSS um, that I know and have had your kiddos, I miss you guys. Um, and thank you to Julianne for reaching out. This has been really fun. Um, it's been really good uh, for me to just kind of remind myself of, you know, the, the benefits that telehealth has brought. And um, yeah. So, all right, everyone, this has been awesome. Love you all. Keep trucking along. Stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands. Bye, guys.